Okay, so I got this question about my store and I want to go more in details about this. So when I first moved to Houston, I had a very famous friend. He's still very famous. He's a Wikipedia page and he just lived in Houston and I, I met him and I was like, wow, you live in Houston. I live in Houston too. This was when after I left law school, after he left uh, NYU, he came to Houston, became an energy trader, did very well for himself. And he had this business model and the business model was he owned a small local, uh, it wasn't even a card shop, it was more a video game shop. And his model was, hey, I'm gonna open this shop and people will come and they'll sell me their items very cheaply. He did have an employee and then it was at the time an actual shop where people would come in and buy stuff and he did some type of sales, right? Eventually that evolved into just him buying stuff that he wasn't very, he wasn't interested in selling any of his video games. He displayed them and they were cool to look at and then he would take them home, the, the better video games. At one time, he accumulated over uh, 20 free Pikachu yellow seals, which then he got graded. He had 18 blue and he had 41 red sealed. Somebody, that is how long he's been there. And this was obviously before the big Pokemon boom. He loves video games, he loves magic cards, he loves Pokemon. In fact, he had a whole room. He, he lives in a mansion. So I live in a very big home. That's why you guys have an Echo. His home is twice the size of my home. My home, I think, is 4,100 square feet or something very close to that without the garage. You add the garage, which is my storage, it's probably a lot more. It's a free car garage. Um, back to my thing, his home is double the size of my home. Eight, thousand square eight thousand plus nine thousand square feet uh it is a huge home and he has one room dedicated to just magic he has one room just dedicated to pokemon where he puts all his cards in the room and it's full the room is about the size um it's not as tall as my office but it's about the same size as the room behind me and he is a ocd addict he needs to sort all the cards and you know i mean at when he does not want to short cards, he just gives it to me for free. He's like, no, I don't wanna deal with this. Okay, just take it, just take it, just take it. And the business model was very simple. He has a store because he had a distributor, so that's what you needed. You need a distributor, you need to show them a bathroom for some reason. And so he could also order magic. This was during Return to Ravnica. We ordered cases and pallets of that stuff because it was a great, very powerful set. Uh, I remember we opened a lot of uh, Battle for Zendikar. We ordered a lot looking for the masterpieces. And so he got the discounted price, but he also had the benefit of people selling him things at the buy list. Uh, that store no longer exists. Um, it has lasted many years, but um, over the time, you know, he had kids. He, his wife kind of forced him to quit. You understand how the story goes, right? Uh, and they've had to pass on that to me. And what, did, what do I mean by that? So I mean that for a distributor, most distributors, uh, at least in the past, they want you to have a physical site. And some, in fact, some of them will actually go visit you. They will schedule an actual physical visit to make sure that you're not like lying about where you are. So I, the reason they chose me, so we have a group of friends and it was about 10 friends in the beginning. Now it's down to eight who actually buy a lot on a frequent basis. And the frequency is more important than how much they buy because I'll explain how these contracts work a little later. So we need a physical place. Well, it came to me uh, to do it because I have a lot of clients in marketing and mo many of my clients, they have strip malls, they have a uh, mall space. Uh, one of them owns a mall. Uh, it's not anywhere close to here, but there's a lot of places that I can have a store for no rent. What does the client get? The client probably gets, you know, more services. I give them, you know, maybe a discount for their marketing uh, that I do every month for them. And the client actually fills up. And in fact, you know, a lot of places I've been put in, I've been kind of shady. And so there's no one there. There's been no one there for two, three years. They put me there. It's like a card shop and they're like, oh, other people will look at that and say, oh, I want to rent that place, right? It's the idea of if you put people in the apartment complex before the open house, it looks like, oh, hey, this is a bustling community. It looks like there's some demand for this apartment complex to have to buy the apartment or to 
live in this apartment. And it's the same idea they do in China all the time when they build up these giant apartments and they make it seem like there's only one room left. Uh, when in fact, you know, there's probably several thousands of rooms left. Uh, they just make it seem like, oh, everyone's doing these rooms are going so fast. You guys know the real estate tactics. So I've been entrusted to open this store. Uh, and this is why for the most part, I don't need customers. Uh, I have tried the customer model. Uh, it has been mm, difficult to say the least. Uh, hiring is very difficult. We have never really had a good hire. Uh, in terms of somebody who can manage the store. So like when you have the store, yes, you were doing it for a distribution, but we also have to kind of make it real. It's gotta look like a real store, right? Otherwise we, the distributor would cut us off, right? They'd be like, oh my gosh, this is not a real store. It's just eight dudes buying stuff, which it is. Um, and I speak openly about this now because now the, the contracts we're signing as a lawyer, they're totally different. We don't need a physical. I speak confidently now because and i'm going to expose what this thing is because i don't think they can hurt us anymore because we have two different distributors both of them did not need a physical location so even if one of them drops us we're still gucci because they're both equally good in fact yeah i think the one that really really wants us um they want us because of a something else something related to my other business um so there's some other humble mom you know some other uh thing that they would want for my marketing agency that I provided them for free. And then I don't think they would ever get rid of the contract. I think their contract terms are much, A, their product is a lot better uh, and we get to pick it first. And B, it's cheaper than the other guy. So, but we keep two distributors just in case, right? Because what if there was a really great set and we needed to order like two of them, two times as much. Because we're greedy as hell, right? It's eight rich dudes who are greedy as hell. <laughs> you know, when, um, to give you kind of an example of like what we uh, do. So when we buy list a collection, I just post it online. I just, I just email blast it and it's like, hey, does anyone want this? Uh, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll take it. Oh, no, I'll take this half. James, can you take this half? No, no, Terry, Terry, give it. No, no, I'm giving it back. Give it back. I don't want this. I want that. So the email changed. Uh, we're on like a the the fourth one because it was so long that we couldn't even like see the damn email like by the time you click the load because there's pictures and stuff right then your whole computer freezes even though i have the best and fastest imac available so that's what that's the business model so people laugh about the toilets and the magic players and the the butt cracks and stuff but like we don't need it i don't need to deal with that i dealt with that because in the past because i had to deal with it Right, we had to, at the distributor could come in at any time. Often they would pre-schedule, but they want to see that, oh, there's gaming tables. Oh, there's singles. Oh, this looks like a store. And then occasionally they would you know, send pictures. But since COVID-19, no one gives a shit about that. They're just like, oh, well, you don't have a store? That's okay. I was like, oh, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. And they're like, oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Sign the contract, please. And, and, and the power leverage, you know, during the big Pokemon boom, the power is all the distributor. The distributor has so much power. Now I can tell you the card market must suck because they got no power now. They're begging and pleading, please take my magic cards. I no one will take them. It's like, no, no, I'm not taking that shit. Give me some baseball cards. <laughs> That's what I said. It, was, it probably wasn't a good idea because they were super happy when I said that. They were like, oh, what do you want? I said, like, just give me some of this. Oh man, you can tell like, oh, I think I made a mistake. They were super happy when I took baseball and football and basketball. I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to have fun opening it. That's it. So basically that's it. As long as we spend $6,000 a month, every single month, and we clear out $72,000 for the year. Now, of course we can spend a thousand and then 11,000. You know, it doesn't have to be 6,000 every month. Obviously when product releases, you spend more. When product doesn't release, you spend less. But as long as we spend about $6,000 a month, it used to be 5,000, they up the, the uh, spend limit or the spend minimal. There is no spend limit. Uh, there is no spend limit. Uh, you might be asking, okay, so what is the deal? What is the price that you get? Everything included, 
we get 40% off MSRP of any item in Target, which makes Pokemon very, very viable at $2.10 a pack or $2.50 for a sleeve. Um, the collections, very viable. Even the mystery boxes are some, you know, as long as they're not like outright scams, they're very viable. Magic is not viable right now at 40%. And that's ridiculous to say that. It's so crazy to say that, that like you could get 40, you basically get half off. Uh, you can also wait for a sale. Sometimes they put product half off. And it's not even sometimes, it's like uh, My Hero Academia right now, I would not invest in that card game. It is half off. Uh, when, when something goes half off, you probably it's like, ooh, something is weird is happening. Digimon, I think, uh, no, not Digimon, MetaZoo is half off, by the way, or 60% off. So yeah, good for MetaZoo. I didn't even know MetaZoo was carried in uh, Walmart until recently, until I saw it on the you know discount one. And yeah, so there's different brackets. There's 30%, which means it's very, very hot. There's 40%, 30% off, 40% off, which means it's like, ooh, this is, 40% is average. It's like 90% of the products, are, no, 80% of the products will be 40% off. Maybe 5% of the products will be 30% off. And then uh, the rest of the products will be 50% or more off in types of like a clearance or something. Now the product we get is not like the product that your local game store gets. It's not a booster box. It's not like a booster case. We get sleeved. I call it sleeved and we get blisters. We get the promo one, the free packs. I've shown it off in stream what we get. We get the, um, in, in collector's edition, we don't get the boxes of collector's edition. We just get the, you know, the one packers, which are the same size as the collector's box, but the one packer. Doesn't have all the uh, uh, 12 or 16, I forget. I don't even know, because a lot of times, oh, we also get free packs, like a Modern Masters, there'd be a free pack. Um, Jumpstart, I think it's a two pack. We got a lot of these random things, uh, which I've opened on camera, which it, it basically, it's like we walk into a Target, we uh, take pictures of items that we want, we send it to the distributor. He says, okay, 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 okay. Well, I, this is how much I have, this is how much I have, this is how much I have, how much you want. We fill out a form, I sign it off, and then uh, it gets sent to me, and then I distribute it to my friends. And it's about 40% off. The, the rule of thumb is, unless it's really a weird product, it's a, always 40% off. And this is anything at Target. So it's movies, DVDs, it's PS5s, if, I mean, if it comes available. Uh, it's anything at Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. Um, the one thing that I can tell you is uh, do not buy Funkos from them. I bought a lot. Of, I bought probably 2,000 Funkos from them. Previous contract. And there was like not the right amount of Chase Funkos. <laughs> so I'll put it that way. So like there's some things that I would avoid buying from them because some of the things are a little shady. You know, some things I feel perfectly fine. The um, unopened booster, the, the, the $2.10 packs. I get better hits from them than I get from like uh, ETBs. ETBs suck, my guy. Like it just sucks. Like I never get anything good from the ETBs or a booster box. I never get anything good from those. But these loose packs they have, I don't know what is happening with them, but they do have the pulls that you want. It's weird. Anyway, hi guys.